Hello, thank you for joining me. So this is our video number four in our series uh, in regard to putting our pressure plate and our pressure vessel together and into an assembly. What we're going to be working on in this video is uh, putting our pressure vessel together. So what I'd like to do is just build the top of the vessel first because the bottom of the vessel is going to be a design of your choosing with the dimensions and size of your choosing. You can do it my way, but I prefer you do it a, a different way, but you're welcome to do it in the manner you see fit. What I'm going to show you in this video is how to put the, the top of the, uh, how to configure the top of the pressure vessel in order to make it sure that it fits into our pressure plate and that those two will uh, actually meet together and make it look realistic. So I took my temple file just to get started and I applied my material to it so I'm all, all set to go. But let's go ahead and uh, go back to our pressure plate and take a look at that. If you remember with our pressure plate we started in the top plane uh, and we extruded up in that top plane. We didn't do a mid-plane, but we extruded up, which makes uh, this surface here uh, coplanar with our top plane. And then we put our uh, lip in here, which is 15 millimeters down, and we made it uh, 8 millimeters wide. And then we cut that in half by putting a 4 millimeter uh, cut in here, and then we put our cosmetic thread on that. So we're going to do something very similar uh, to our uh, pressure vessel, just to get started. That's just going to be the top of the vessel. So let's start with the top plane. Let's go to sketch, go to circle, draw that out. Spark dimension, we're going to make that 155 millimeters, just the same as we did with the plate. And then we're going to go to features, extrude cut. Now let's make sure we do this. If we're not going to go to the top, we're going to go to the bottom. Let's make it about 25 millimeters. You can make it a, a size that you see fit. But of course, you have to fit in all those features in the top of that first. So you have to make sure you, you're able to accommodate all those. So. We're going to split, uh, switch the direction. We're going to go down and go to the green check mark. So let's go ahead and click on this one more time. Go to sketch. We're going to draw another circle out. Now we're going to make our cut. Now remember our cut. It is uh, 8 millimeters from uh, that circle that defines where that cut's going to be and the edge. It's going to be 8 millimeters. So we're going to emulate what we had before. And uh, in our pressure plate, go to extrude cut. Go to go through all instead of blind. So if we change the dimensions here, it'll go ahead and make that cut. Now conceivably, we could have done this in one feature. I didn't do it. I like making my cuts and my extrudes separate. That way we can deal with this separately if we wanted to do so as two different features. So we're going to call this base extrude. Just be consistent with everything else we've been doing. Uh, we want to rename our features. And we're going to call this base cut. Okay, and we're going to continue cutting. If you look at our pressure vessel, what we have here is a lip our jar lip which actually goes on the outside so we have material on the outside we made our cut on the inside we're going to do the, just the opposite here we're going to make our cut on the outside and have our material on the inside so let's go ahead and click on this surface go to sketch go to the sketch button over here before we go to convert entities and we don't necessarily have to do this because it's already selected in blue it's going to click on that it's going to assume that outside line which is okay but if you wanted to clear that we could just take our mouse and go over here and just click over here and then we can go to convert entities click on that edge in a way that what that allows us to do is unselect what's there and then uh, go ahead and select the elements that we really do want so we do want that edge go to green check mark and just like we did before we're going to have to go to the green check mark again in the convert entities dialog box here in the properties manager go to offset entities we're going to make that four millimeters and click on that line click on the inside here and then we're going to go to features go to extrude cut and it's a requirement in the website, it has to be 12 millimeters deep. And green check mark. So there's our cut. So what if you can see what we're going to be doing here, the, the pressure plate is going to go on the top here, and our pressure vessel is going to be built on the bottom here. We'll see the building of that for the next video. But let's go ahead and put our, um, our cosmetic threads in. Let's again go back to our pressure plate and take a look at that. If you look at this outside diameter, if you remember this dotted line which represents the extent of the cut of the threads on the inside, if we go to the evaluate and check out what that diameter is, and we're going to go to measure, click on that guy, it says it's 147 millimeters. And that's is the result of our 4 millimeter cut, you know, from 155 on the outside. And uh, yeah, so that extent, what we have here uh, in regard to this uh, circle here, if we also measure that, that's going to be 150 millimeters. Uh, 
Let's see if we can choose that and go to measure. It should say 150 millimeters. Oh man, I'm making this so hard. Okay, if we just click it out, it tells you what it is. So we can't really measure that because it isn't really a feature. But if you click on that uh, that uh, annotation, it'll tell you what the, the diameter is. So the diameter of that is um, from 147 millimeters to 150 is the three millimeter thick threads that are going to go in, into the into the material. So we're going to keep that value in mind. <clears throat> if we go to our uh, insert annotations cosmetic thread we're going to click on this edge and we're going to follow the standards that are uh, that what we did on uh, the pressure plate we're going to go ahead and follow those standards there we're going to put on a um, 150 millimeters was uh, what it required but if you do 150 millimeters here it's not going to like us if we type that in it's going to be a little bit bigger than 145 it's not going to allow us to put in threads that are going to exceed that but if you put in something that's uh, substantially smaller than that, it's not going to like that either. So what it does is it puts those threads, the extent of the cut of those threads, well, well into the inside, which really doesn't make sense. It would just chew apart our part. So what we want to do is have the three millimeters from that edge. So let's go ahead and exit out of this and go ahead and measure that. Just to be safe, it should be 147 millimeters, the same as the other one on our pressure plate. Uh, now we want to take that, uh, that inside diameter, that major diameter, and make that uh, three millimeters left less, which has got to be 144. So let's go back to insert, go to annotations, go to cosmetic thread, we're going to choose none, we're going to choose on this edge though, and then choose none. Instead of 120, we're going to make that 144 millimeters, and we're going to do a uh, thread call out, uh, we're going to do the condition, it's going to be through all, and the thread call out is going to be again as it was last time, with capital letters, machine threads. There we go. So we should be able to see that. We see the thread uh, hidden line circle that represents the, the, the extent of the cut of the threads inside of our material. And again, what we don't see in regard to our options up here with our document properties, we don't see the cosmetic threads, the shaded portion of that. Okay, that's about it. The last thing we want to do here is uh, name our cut. And we're going to call that a lip cut or something very similar, you name it in the manner that you see fit in order to make it descriptive. Okay, I think that's enough for this video. Thanks for joining me. There are more to come.